Okay, I think it's about time for another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, subject of today's video is making yet another circuit to power up one of these. Yes, I'm going to make a half bridge flyback driver. And this is the design of my circuit right here. It uses an IR2153D chip. A little self-oscillating MOSFET driver provides both the high and the low side gate drives. So, um, yeah. All I've got to do is figure out what these components over here need to be. And I might put a capacitor across my flyback primary to give it some resonance. I could put that capacitor here or I could put it there. I think I might just as well go with putting it there. So anyway, I want to get a frequency range of about, you know, maybe 17 kilohertz to 40 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do at first is I'm just going to see if I can make this one at a fixed frequency of, say, uh, I don't know, 21 kilohertz. So I'll take this resistor out here, this variable resistor, and find out what values I need for the resistor and the capacitor. And yeah, we'll see how well that works. Okay, you're probably looking at this and thinking, oh my god, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Well, I've got the data sheet of the chip right here, and this chart is how we're going to find out the frequency. So I've decided I'm going to use a 1 nanofarad cap, which, which is represented by the yellow dots on this line here. And since I want to go for 21 kilohertz to start with, 21 kilohertz is somewhere around about here, so you cannot really see the lines because they're so faint, but this is about 20 kilohertz, so if we follow that along, there's a dot right here, and if we follow that down, that's about 30,000 ohms, and I'd say that's roughly where 21 kilohertz is, so we're going to go with 1 nanofarad and 33 kilo ohms, I mean, sorry, yeah, 33 kilo ohms. So 1 nanofarad and 33 kilo ohms. Okay, well here's a little test circuit that I made using the chip. And as you can see by the waveform on the oscilloscope, it is working, although it's a kind of a strange waveform. Don't know why we've got a little like curve at the top and bottom of the trace there. That seems a bit strange, but mind you, it might be because I'm using this little transformer that I made. Just one that I knocked together just to act as a kind of a load to make sure the circuit works. However, the frequency is spot on. I could not have got that better. As you can see, what 21.5 kilohertz. So that's right in the ballpark there. So the next step I want to do is I want to make this variable frequency so I can go from about 17 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz, something like that. Okay, I'm not sure why, but my capturing software appears to be telling me my microphone is unplugged, whereas in fact it is plugged in because you can unfortunately hear me speaking. However, I've installed a variable resistor in the thing now, so I can change the frequency. So we've now got a 22k resistor there instead of a 33k, and I'm using a 22k potentiometer, or variable resistor, and as I adjust this, see the wave gets longer and shorter as I adjust the thing. Okay, I just adjusted the shot here so you can see what I'm doing a bit more clearly. Um, I don't know why this has come out all overexposed, but hopefully you can see what's going on. This is about the best shot I can get because the camera seems to have an incredible trouble seeing the display on the meter. But as I adjust this, you can see the frequency changes, so we can go from about 16 kilohertz and all the way up to about 32, so that's that's working absolutely perfectly. Okay, well just before I put this onto a proper circuit board, and by proper circuit board I mean um, something like this. I was just doing a few experiments and if I short out the capacitor that's connecting this circuit to this transformer and we look at the waveform with well, the capacitor shorted out as you can see we've now got a perfect square wave more or less 
This is without the capacitor. This is with the capacitor. And this is without the capacitor. You know, this would make a really good gate drive transformer. But let's not get into that. And before I forget to say it, because I keep forgetting to say it, I keep forgetting to mention how I'm actually powering this circuit. Well, I'm not using the 27k resistor or anything like that. I'm powering all of this from my homemade power supply, so the chip is being powered on about 12 volts, and the half bridge is being powered on about 20 volts. But now I think it's time to put this onto a circuit board. So I've decided to omit the 27k resistor powering the chip and just go with a single 12 volt power supply for the chip. And the half bridge is going to be powered off rectified mains. Or at least 110 volt rectified mains, because if I try to power this off 240 volts, I'm going to saturate that core. There's just no getting around that. Alright then, so I've put it onto a little board now. Here's the chip. Actually, this board was from a thing. This was a board that I made for another project that used this chip that never saw the light of day, so I thought, you know, I might as well just reuse it. And here's the half bridge using the ultra high tech method of rubber bands to keep everything in place. So, so, let's turn this on and see if it works. And indeed it does. Yeah, so I just got this little transformer that I knocked up connected to it. Just to make sure that it works and everything does. I mean, we've got frequency adjust here, as you can see. Get a nice good square wave from it. So the next thing to do is hook this part up to a more powerful transformer. Because at the moment I'm just running a wire to my power supply, powering the half bridge. And we'll see if we can power a flyback off this thing. I'll see if I can power a flyback off this thing. Okay, so we're going to do a really low power test now. So I've got this part powered up. Now I've got this transformer on the remote switch. So I'm just going to turn that on. And you'll see that it does work. Bear in mind, this is just a low power test, so it's not going to really do anything spectacular. That's going to come later. Got a little spark right there. And we can adjust this. we get the best output. I don't know why I keep saying we when I mean I. Okay, let's just turn that off. Make sure that's discharged. So anyway, I think what we need to do now is upgrade to a much better transformer because I don't even know what the output of that, what the output voltage of that is. Okay, so trying with this transformer now. This one is, um, I don't know actually. I think this one is a 20, yeah, 28.5 volts. So that's going to be like 30 something. Yeah, so that's going to be about 40 volts without a load. So. Uh, should be quite a considerable voltage into the circuit, so that means uh, this is going to see about 20 volts, because remember it's a half bridge. And I've got this meter here, just to keep an eye on the current. So, turn on the chip, and I'll turn on the juice. That looks more like it. I'm only drawing about 500 milliamps. So, let's see. Get some sparks. Seeing if I can find. Well, oh, I can really hear that 16 kilohertz right there. I know you probably cannot hear that on YouTube. I'm quite impressed with the current draw of this thing. It's not even drawing an amp. 
I don't think this is the kind of flyback that likes arcing very much, though. And of course, you couldn't see what I was doing while I was doing the thing. I just realized that the uh, potentiometer to adjust the frequency and everything was way out of the shot. But you'll just have to go with what I did there. Okay, so now we're going to try this on 64 volts DC. That's interesting because this is a 46 volt transformer. And when you rectify that to DC, it's 64 volts. So, 64 volts. But we don't do 64 volts on this channel, do we? I'm having a photonic induction moment. But I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's only drawing 700 milliamps. I can hear something arcing to something there when I'm not pulling an arc, so, uh... Better not overdo it. And you know the best part? The MOSFETs are still stone cold. Let's see if we can record some corona. Hopefully it won't knock the camera out. Because I always find this stuff fascinating. Smell the ozone off that already. I like that smell. I just realized I wasn't wearing my headset microphone. So I'll have to boost the sound on this video. Okay, so that was a little test using another flyback. Now this one's got about 30 turns on it. The previous one is this one here. Only has 15 turns that I've wound onto the core, so this one this one is going to require a lot more voltage, but I just thought I'd show some corona from it. Anyway, now I know that works. Let's try 70 volts AC, and then 120 volts AC, and that's as high as I'm going. Well, I thought it was about time we use a bigger transformer, so, uh, I'm using this one. So anyway, we're going to stuff 109 volts DC into this circuit and see what it does. So, turn on the chip. And let's see if this works. Of course, I don't care if I blow my MOSFETs because I've got plenty more of those and those are 500 volt rated MOSFETs anyway. It's with 109 volts. And only drawing 200 milliamps. Well, actually more like 300, but you know. So anyway, what I want to do is I want to adjust this but I'm going to put a little plastic sleeve or something on that first because in a previous test, when I touched this, we got corona out of that, so I want to make sure any electrical contact with my hand is minimized. Right, so now we're going to do this on rectified yank mains. So 240 goes in here, 120 more or less comes out here, and that's going to get rectified to about 170 volts. So we're going to power this circuit on 170 volts DC and see what it does. Something might blow up, or it might work absolutely perfectly. But let's see. 170 volts. Ah, look at that. Hundred and seventy volts. I'm also trying to find out the best position for the primary tuning. It's only pulling about 380 amps. I mean, 380 milliamps. It would be pulling a lot if it was pulling 380 amps. Okay, I'm going to just try it with the tuning right about here, see what we get. What is good there? Trying to find where it works best. You know. Oh yeah, that's good like that. I 
And so there we go. Just see if the MOSFETs got hot at all. There might still be some charge in the capacitors, which I want to... No, stone cold! So there we go. So, if you live in the US, you could actually build this part. That You could actually power the half bridge directly off mains. Just to limit the inrush, and of course you will need some kind of power supply for the chip there. I'm just using my homemade power supply to power the chip, but... Yeah. I'm gonna make some more arcs. It's not even pulling an amp. So anyway, that brings us to the end of this video, so I thought I might just as well go over to the schematic one last time. So this is my final design. I know it looks a bit messy, but you can pretty much make it out. So, as you can see, this is the flyback driver that uses the two IR2153D chip. We've got two power sources. We've got 12 volts here to power the chip. And then this is where your mains goes in, which can be 120 volts. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you could use a step-up transformer or just, if you live over here, power it directly on 240 volt mains. Then we've got the flyback primer itself, which I found out works better without a capacitor and I didn't have a capacitor connected to it at any part in the video. I did try with the capacitor, but it didn't really make much of a difference, so... Yeah, you can just leave the capacitor out and connect it directly like that, which is what I did. One thing you must be careful of is to not ground the zero-volt rail, because at the breaker box or the fuse box, in most houses, the neutral and the ground are connected together, so... If you ground this point here, you're gonna you're gonna short out one of the diodes in the bridge rectifier, and that's not good. You don't want to do that. So you just leave that floating. But do ground the high voltage output of the flyback. I recommend that you do ground that. Also, I do recommend that you make a little spark gap, maybe I don't know half an inch or so. So when you're not drawing an arc. It'll just reform there, and it will stop the flyback from arcing pin to pin, and stop the flyback destroying itself, basically, so, yeah. And, of course, over here is the control to set the frequency of where the flyback works the best. Anyway, that's it for this video, so I'll see you next video, whatever video that's going to be, and until next time, goodbye.